So the functions of ROC, that is the functions of registrar of companies, they'll have a unique identification number, that is what the company need to tell the registrar. Powers of ROC, now what are the powers of ROC, what are the functions the Ministry of Corporate Affairs Hello everybody, a warm welcome to one and all. I am Abhilash Chandra from the Department of Commerce and Management in Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. Welcome to all the students here. This is the last session of Companies Act. Companies Act is a very, very simple subject where the introduction is what we always go with. The 10th session here will complete the company law. Now what exactly the session is for you? That is the Last session I told you about the registrar of company what exactly it is now it is a continuation of the ninth session that is registrar of companies. Now here registrar of companies is a person who will actually give the sanction or incorporation certificate and a commencement certificate to the public company as well as the private company. Now here he will be liable for all the statutory work the company people should do it. He is a person who will check each and every document and if he feels that the documents are all legal and he can go with the statutory law and then everything should be fulfilled and then he goes with his signature. Now he should actually see that which state or union territory the company is being formed and he need to sanction it. So registrar of companies specially called as ROC appointed under section 609. So this is what the 609 is all about of Companies Act covering the various states and union territories are vested with the primary duty of registering companies. So that is what the thing is it may be a state or a union territory. And here what happens is whenever they go with the primary duty of registering companies and LLPs. LLPs I told you. Uh, what exactly LLPs is that is limited liability partnership also comes under the Companies Act 2013. Floated in the respective states and union territory and ensuring that such companies and LLP comply with statutory requirement. So whichever is the statutory requirement they are supposed to fulfill only then go they go with the registration under the Act. Now please understand when we go with private company and we go with public company. Now here what happens is the public limited, let's go with this, private limited. Now there are two certificates which are very very important to start a public limited company that is one is incorporation certificate, incorporation, incorporation certificate certificate and next one is all about here that is say you will need to get incorporation certificate you can start a private company by the registrar but for a public limited after getting incorporation certificate again the public limited need to approach the registrar of companies and registrar of companies will give them something called commencement certificate commencement certificate certificate so these are the two things which usually happens so that is what the registrar of company will give now for any new business if you are supposed to register you are supposed to go to the registrar of companies any renewal should happen you are supposed to again go to the registrar of companies if you want to change the objective of memorandum of association you are supposed to go to the registrar of company as well as to convert private limited to a public limited also you are supposed to go to the registrar of companies that means this registrar of company becomes a statutory body where he will get and he will make all the decisions with respect to the running of a company. So what exactly happens, what exactly the functions are, powers are, we need to check. So the functions of ROC, that is the functions of registrar of companies. These are the following uh, sections which you are supposed to know. My, my humble request to all of you is, if you don't know the sections, don't write the sections. But if you write some section and you will write something else in that uh, title what happens is that is actually wrong don't do that now section 72 subsection 2 they says that issue 
certificate of registration of charge without which the charge cannot be taken into account by liquidators or creditors that is what the first function of ROC is that is they will be issuing a certificate that to from a registrar of certificate that is registrar of companies of charge without which the charge cannot be taken into account that is only when he makes a charge it is called as a charge if it is not done by him you will not consider that has a charge at all next is section 78 the registrar gives a notice please understand the registrar is a person who is there in the registrar of companies and he has a sole authority to sign all the documents the registrar gives a notice to the company in order to enable it to inform whether the company has itself created a charge and it has not then informed about the reason for the same now again they'll actually give a circular or a notice saying that whether the company have actually created a charge or uh, if they have not then why they have not done the reason they are supposed to state now section 81 says registrar of required that is registrar is required to keep the register of charges in respect to every company so every company they are supposed to make it mandatory that they are supposed to have now next one is return is to be filed with registrar in case promoter stakes changes now what happens is here you are supposed to uh, file everything and you are supposed to give it to the registrar that if any case the promoter stakes changes in the company why it has been changed what are the things uh, which has changed and uh, who has taken it everything you are supposed to give and that to what you need to return is to be filed you are supposed to file everything filed with the registrar section 137 says copy of financial statement that is your financial statement to be filed with the registrar so whatever the financial statement you are preparing you are preparing one of the uh, financial statement you will prepare for the registrar of company so you should be very very proper while filing the financial statement section 157 says that company to inform the registrar of the identification number they'll have a unique identification number that is what the company need to tell the registrar that is also a function next one here is section 208 says that after inspection and inquiry now inspection is done by the registrar inquiry is done the registrar is required to submit a report in writing to the central government so whenever the state government or the unit territory any of the companies is registered now they need to give the entire sum of all the companies and they are supposed to uh, give the inspection uh, records or inquiry records and then they are supposed to submit it to the central government see this is what the registrar of companies does and registrar of company is a government employee is not a private employee he gets the money from the central government itself next one you are supposed to know is all about the powers of roc now what are the powers of roc now you got to know the functions of roc the powers of roc is like the first one registration of companies obtained by filling an application with the roc so only when you go and you submit and you get a, a file or application about you can uh, start a company everything you are supposed to uh, fill it and then you are supposed to give it to the ROC. ROC will only actually sign and only then you can start your company. That is what the power, the registration of ROC is all about. Second is power to make entries of satisfaction and realize without intimation from the companies that is he have all the powers to whenever he wants he can go and he can inquire all the things and get all the entries next is powers to call for information that is he can call any company for the information if he feels so inspect books and conduct inquiry so whenever he feels that there is any fraudulent act is happening or some misconduct is happening he can actually go to the industry or the company anytime at and he can check the books of accounts and if anything is there those people need to give a proper clarity to this person so he has a autonomous power in his hand section 209 says the power 
of search and seizure in the sense he can seize any goods any product any company that is what he feels they are going with a fraudulent act and here what happens is you cannot restrict the registrar of company the reason is now he should go with all the mandatory laws which he will be getting it done and he can seize any company if there is any fraudulent act and that is what the power he gets plus he can search the entire company with his uh, people and he can get an investigation also done. Next is powers to remove the name from the register of companies that means he can cancel any registration. So these are the powers of the ROC. Now understand here, the first one, registration of a company is obtained by filing an application with the ROC. That means if you don't file, you will not get the registration at all. That is what it is. Second thing is power to make entries of satisfaction and release without intimation from company. That is he can actually go with any kind of a thing. He don't need to inform any companies. He can release those documents. Next is powers to call for information. He can call anybody and get the information. He can check any books and he can inspect anything, whichever he feels that. That is, he has all independent powers. Next is he have a power to search and seize the goods or the company itself. And the last one here is power to remove the name from the registrar of companies. So these are the things what uh, ROC powers will be. I'll tell you more about the powers of ROC that is uh, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. After that I'll tell you what are the real functions of the ROC here. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs is an Indian government ministry. Please understand the Ministry of Corporate Affairs is a Indian government ministry. Next is it is primarily concerned with administration of the Companies Act 2013. The Companies Act 1956 though the Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008 or other allied acts are and rules and regulation frame there under mainly for regulating the functioning of the corporate sector of accordance with the law. So here what happens is the Ministry of Law, they are very particular about three things. The first one here you need to know is they are particular about 2013 Companies Act. Next is 1956 Companies Act and the C is it's the LLPs that is Limited Liability Partnership Act of 2008 and that is what they are primarily concerned with. So these are the acts which are being governed by the uh, Ministry of Corporate Affairs. It is responsible mainly for regulation of Indian enterprises in industrial and service sector. If you understand more than manufacturing we have service oriented sectors where 84% of the companies they go with service oriented and the remaining say 16% will go with manufacturing. Ministry is mostly served by the Indian Corporate Law Service which is called as ICLS that is called Indian Corporate Law Services and this is what the Indian ICLS is the officer cadre. That is what it's a officer cadet. So the functions of Ministry of Corporate Affairs, what are the functions the Ministry of Corporate Affairs they does? The first one is notification of various sections of Companies Act 2013. So regularly they are supposed to give the notification what really happens in 2013 Companies Act to the public. Next is formulation of rules and regulation under various acts that is administered by the ministry. So whenever the rules and regulation changes what happens is they are supposed to tell this in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha and then it should be passed. Now that is what the Ministry of Commerce should always go with. Next is convergence of Indian accounting standards. See please understand this we have something called IAS that is Indian Accounting Standard. It is not IAS is not the Indian Administrative Service. Here we have that is the Accounting Standard, Indian Accounting Standards with International Financial Report Standard that is called IFRS. 
what is ifrs international financial reporting standard we are supposed to stick with the international financial reporting standard as well as we are supposed to go with accounting standard which is followed by india implementation of competition act now though what happens is the companies will always have a competition now there should be not a negative competition or cutthroat competition you should always have a positive competition if any kind of unfair practice is happening then the ministry of uh, commerce affairs they are supposed to restrict it through competition commission of india now here also what happens is see example there are two companies which are rival but still they are supposed to maintain a code of conduct and ethical behavior and we should have a positive competition they are not supposed to have unfair trade practice here we go with implementation of e governance in mca mca is all about ministry of corporate affairs and then we have the sixth point that is very very important that is conducting investor education now investor education also should be done by the corporate uh, affairs and that is awareness of programs then management of the cadre of indian corporate law service that is called icls and that is what it is and that is how we have given it here building system for early detection of irregularities in corporate functioning so if there is any irregularity it is the job of the corporate uh, affairs that is they are supposed to check and they are supposed to set right everything and lastly it is to undertake investigation of serious frauds through the series that is the series fraud investigation officer there is a special officer called as series fraud investigation office and that is what they are supposed to carry and they are the one who will appoint all these people and they are they will be called as a central government officers and that is how the functions of corporate uh, affairs will actually enhances a smooth managerial function of a business hope you have understood this session here students the entire chapters chapter comes to an end and this is what the 10 sessions we have taken for completing one entire chapter of companies act that is the first chapter i'll be coming with the second chapter called as secretary where i'll tell you about what exactly a company secretary is all about his or her powers and duties are will be and here what exactly i always suggest you people is please keep referring books i'll be giving you the pdf and the formats where you can understand it completely and uh, i'll see you when i see you thank you so much